Hello and welcome to the talk with Soaring Tan Howe. Today I'm joined by a very special person, a very special guest, a famous humanitarian a social activist and an influential person, an inspiration and a role model for many. Uh, thank you, Mr. Philem Rohan Singh, for joining me on this show despite your busy schedule. So let's start our short interaction. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, to start with, I have a question, uh, not just a question from my side, but mm -hmm. from the people who, who love you, okay. who love to hear more from you. Uh, you have been a humanitarian and a social activist mm -hmm. for a quite long time now. Mm -hmm. um, you have been inspiring and influencing people, especially the youth mm -hmm. of Manipur and beyond mm -hmm. all over India. Yeah. We would like to know what makes you involved in this present crisis, mm -hmm. the conflict between the Meite community and Kukizo community more actively. Mm -hmm. And then we want to know your understanding on this issue. Yeah. So, uh, so my dear brother, firstly, I would like to thank very much for giving me this opportunity and giving me this platform to at least present my views. Right. Yeah. So brother, uh, when, when, when it comes to me, I have very two important uh, principles of my life. Okay. One principle is my faith in Christ. Mm -hmm. I never compromise that. No matter what kind of uh, uh, you know, disturbances or circumstances come, I was kicked out of my family when I was in 10th standard for believing Christ. Mm. We, ha we are uh, the you know, headmen of our clan, the Philem, this uh, surname. We used to host our own local deity. We are the family who host that local deity. And I am the only believer from that uh, mm -hmm. family. Mm -hmm. So my family was trying to compromise my faith and uh, was told to you know, bow down to uh, the our local deity. I, I said, like, it doesn't mean that I don't disrespect our local deity, but my faith, my love for Christ has already suppressed me from everything and I've decided to follow Jesus. So mm -hmm. I'll never compromise that. And because of that, I was kicked out of my family when I was in 10th standard. And one very important principle, which I think it, it's not just me, but every Christian should uh, follow in their life is okay. this number one promise and being faithful to Christ that you don't ever forsake the faith in Christ. That's number one. And okay. that's what I am I'm, I'm keeping till date. Okay. Secondly, I don't mix up my love for Christ. And also I don't mix up my love for my uh, state. And I would say my community specifically. Okay. You are a Naga. Right. I'm a Meite. Right. They are cookies. They are Keralites. They have different, you know, community form. But when it comes to Meite, I think being born as a Meite and, you know, uh, I, I also do believe in diplomacy, but okay. being myself, being a Maite, I cannot, you know, forsake my own community. Right. Just because people are, you know, blackmailing me from different angles, trying to use religion as a propaganda and trying to convince me. I'll, I'll never do that. So I just believe in two principles, faith for my, uh, faith for Christ and standing for my own community and my love for my state and my community. Um, with a joke, I'll just make you understand what I'm doing today. Mm -hmm. Few years back, when the uh, you know my own community, I would say I won't name it, but my own community, my Maitai people, when they were trying to convince me mm. of uh, uh, our local deity and the Sanamahism and to you know leave Christ and Christianity okay. and come back to the roots and all, I was being done so many uh, counselings and I had talks with so many of the leaders also. Mm -hmm. um, that time, I'm from Moirang, so. Oh. Chorchanpur is very near to us. Right, right. And I posted a lot of interesting stuff in terms of a believer. Mm -hmm. And many, you know, Bible school students from Chorchanpur follow my account in Facebook and Instagram. They used to regard me a lot, a lot. Okay. And even they used to consider me even by telling and calling me as uh, uh, Abraham, faith father of Manipur, because okay. he used to never compromise his faith. Right. And even my name was used in many of the Bible schools to make the students understand about the uh, faith perspective. That right. no matter what the circumstances is, Rohan stood. Rohan is standing for Christ, and this is how you are supposed to, you know, fight for your own uh, battle of faith. That okay. was how my name was even used. Mm. Now today. Just the reason because I stood from my community, my name from 
Abraham, faith father, mm -hmm. has changed to Judah Iscariot, okay. the one who sold Jesus Christ. Okay. But the main question is like, who is Judah Iscariot? Judah Iscariot is someone who sold Jesus Christ, one of the disciples who betrayed Jesus Christ just for the sake of money. I'm a Maiti community. You will love your Naga community no matter what circumstances come. Right. Because that's, that is the very reason why the Nagas and the Kuki had a conflict way back in 1992 and 1993. Because all the Nagas stood for the Naga, mm -hmm. all the Kuki stood for the Kuki. And that's simple as that. It's not a rocket science. I asked one day to one of a very famous pastor from the uh, Palme community. Mm -hmm. He's from Mao. I won't name him for his, yeah. uh, for his sake. Right. I said, Pastor, what were you doing in 1992 when this Naga and the Kuki conflict brought up? Mm -hmm. He said, I was ordained as a pastor at that time. Uh, the, the day itself, when I was ordained as a pastor, that night he ran and, you know, um, guard the bunkers. He was allotted a duty in the bunker itself. And I said, how did you pray, Pastor, at that time when this war was uh, fought? Uh, he, said, uh, he, he said, we prayed like Lord Jesus, we want Naga to win this war. Mm -hmm. And I jokingly said, how would be the cookies praying? And he also jokingly told me that the cookies would be also praying that Lord Jesus, let, let let us, you know, let cookies win the world. Mm. And I jokingly told him that you are also a believer. You are also a believer. Mm. And you are praying to our same Lord Jesus Christ and asking to, you know, make win the battle from both the sides. Mm. I hope like Jesus might be, you know, getting a little headache that time. Okay. And in a joking way, what I'm trying to convince in this thing is like, no Naga stood for, no, not a single individual of Naga stood for the cookies, telling that they are Christians or they are believers. Okay. And no cookies stood for Nagas, telling that the Nagas are Christian, we will be in their side. Mm. Faith is a different perspective. But okay. when it comes to community also, we should also stand for ourselves. We Maite Christians are facing a lot of persecution from our own Maite believers. Right. It's a very, I mean, open secret. Mm. Nothing to hide off that. Every day, even after this conflict, many stories of persecution has been uh, coming out from it's yeah. reaching my ear every day. Okay. It's not a it's not a new subject anymore. Right, right. But but it doesn't mean that like uh, we would cite you know I would say like you know many cookies are coming and telling me in phone calls or messages you know blackmailing me in another way or form that like why don't all the mighty Christians cite with the uh, cookies? Okay. I, mean, I, I I think it doesn't make sense you okay. know to come with this kind of approach. Mm -hmm. So I I'm very clear with this perspective. See, if it is for Christ's sake, it doesn't mean if it is Nagas or Kukis or anyone, we can come together at a table, we can sit, we can pray together, right. we can worship together. But when it comes to a clarity of this community thing, I'm not being, you know, very, uh, I would say, a racist telling this, mm. but what I'm trying to convey is being born as a Maitre. Okay. I'll always stand for Maitre. Okay. No matter what the circumstances come, I will always stand for my community my state, my people. Right. That's right. a very clear message that I would give. Right. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Rowan. You have made it clear yeah. why you're more actively involved in this mm -hmm. crisis. Mm -hmm. um, in any way, yeah. how are you actively involved? Mm -hmm. How are you contributing mm -hmm. to your Maite community yeah. in this current crisis, if we may know? Yeah. So, uh, in the first phase, I was actively involved in this propaganda war because um, um, See, when it comes to fact, it has to be very clear, mm -hmm. no matter what the Maite is or Kuki, I'm getting pressures from both the sides because everyone knows that 250 churches of the Maite Christians, let me be very clear, 250 approximately of the Maite Christian churches were vandalized mm -hmm. by the Maites, right. by my community, by my own community. Just the reason because we follow Christianity and the same religion which is followed by the Kukis, we are getting flashback from our own Maiti community. And exposing this very fact uh, itself, I'm getting a lot of pressures too. Okay. And, and, and I, 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 I feel in my heart and I believe in my heart that this is what you know, Lord wants to tell the entire world from my own mouth. Mm -hmm. Because I don't want to you know, lie and I don't want to cheat. Now, let's come again to the cookie side. Just before you go there, yeah. have you in any way uh, expressed or uh, did something about the vandalization of the 250 churches of the Maitre community? We are actively working on that. 
many uh, i'm also joined with many of the uh, councils and forum like uh, i won't name the councils and forum for now but we are also actively taking part in all the uh, you know different methods of like how this can be okay. re, uh, like uh, rebuilt or any in any, any form and a lot of persecution things are also happening so we are we are actively involved in that okay. now again uh, let me come back to the cookie side mm-hmm. when i was going through the data and I have had a lot of meetings here itself in this venue itself. I've called a number of pastors here from my uh, Maiti community. I've had a lot of meetings here. We have taken testimonies by testimonies from different pastors. Yes, it is very true that Maiti Christian churches, majority of the Maiti Christian churches are being vandalized by the Maitis. And when I when I interrogated them, why is the reason? People believe that we are following the same religion that of the cookies so they think that we are on the side of the cookies okay so that is one of the reason why we have been vandalized mm. and from the faith perspective forget about those people i am the one who is facing a lot of persecution from my own very childhood but that's not a new 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 subject for us now when we look to the cookie side when i have heard testimonies from different pastors at least eight pastors mm-hmm. testified that their churches has been vandalized by the cookies Okay. So when I interrogated more Maiti th- churches, yeah, Maiti Christian churches, okay, has been vandalized by the cookies. Now when I go deeper, because it's very hard for me to believe that that a believer is destroying another's believer church. I mean, that's a very, 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 I mean, an an unimaginable, you know, mm-hmm. thing. So I was also going a little deeper on this perspective. Then I found, happened to found that. In Kangpokpi, there is a pastor called Pastor Ibungo. He, have all, he has also come here and he has even given interviews on some of the channels also. Mm-hmm. The Kangpokpi entire ta- Kangpokpi town committee tries to claim that there is no such church in Kangpokpi. Mm. There is no such, such church of Pastor Ibungo's church in Kangpokpi. When I interrogated and when I spoke with Pastor Ibungo, brother, what is a church according to you? Is it only the building that has cross and that has, you know, um, big buildings and you know I, to me that is also church but yeah. to us to believers like us the maiti christian a church is not just a building but you know if you have a place already rented or something else for the sake of christ then mm-hmm. you would be gathered in that place right. in the name of christ that is a church for us mm-hmm. uh, a church is not necessary that you have to have a big building when i interrogated it happens that it was such a kind of a place where they used to gather but it i have all the photos and all where he was also gathering chochampo was a very complicated subject very complicated thing because the entire cookie cho community was messaging me that there is no any kind of burning and destroying of the churches mm. in, in chochampo too because I, it will be also very hard for me to believe but it seems that when i interrogated many of the pastors who had been pastors in those churches there has been at least reports of some vandalization lootings and right. inside the church right. but to cover up all these things they 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 kind of remake the church also there are at least two churches in laikhong also mm-hmm. laikhong is a periphery area okay. when when i say maite christian churches has been vandalized by the cookie majority of the cookie things that it is in the infall valley area that they have done it no it's not that it's in the periphery area kangpopi is a periphery area laikhong is a periphery area sugunu is also a periphery area so this at least vandalization of the eight churches happen in the periphery areas of manipur mm. so at least um i don't know if it is a mistake from their side or not but we have at least got the photos and i've got pastor suras who was uh, serving in that uh, church of chochanpur also he was also he also has a photo in his, in his phone also right now that uh, he has this after and uh, before photo so already so churches on both the sides have been yeah bo- both the sides have, has been vandalized but yeah. what 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 uh, amazes or like you know what 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 uh, breaks my heart is like you mm. know seeing believers right again you know vandalizing some 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 believers churches mm. of other that community mm. that is a little as you know a saddening thing do you think a uh, community uh, for example the maitai community who mm-hmm. are not believers mm-hmm. do you think uh, there could have been an intention to persecute the minorities which mm-hmm. we believers are yeah. to persecute us in the name of the conflict do you think there, there, this might have happened i would uh, sorry i would put you in this way mm-hmm. 
the Maite is attacking or persecuting the Maite Christians mm -hmm. is purely is purely a Christian persecution way. Okay. That that a non-believer is persecuting a believer. Mm -hmm. Though, so the Maite community let, might be the Sanamahism or the Hindus or any kind or the mm -hmm. majority group persecuting the minor Maite Christian community is purely a persecution story. That's a pure persecution story. But a Maite as a whole, having any kind of fights with the cookie, that cannot be treated as a Christian persecution war. That's a purely a community war. I mean, how would you term Nagas and the cookies fighting? Would you term that the majority Naga Christian community is, you know, uh, having a fight with the minority cookie Christian community? You can't term that way. That is not, you know, that is not a religion war because both are Christian. Right. Both fought for, you know, many agendas right. in that time. Okay. So now the fight between the Maites and the Kukis, yes, churches are involved, mandirs are involved, but only just a reason because one major one group is Hindu and one group is uh, a cr Christian majority and one group is a majority, the Maite community and the Hindu community. People were trying to portray this into a very uh, religiousistic war. Right. It, I, I would say both the communities, not only the cookies, but also our Maiti community, they were trying to use this as a propaganda war of both the religion community, okay. but it fell. But my main focus was I was breaking all this propaganda war of the cookie community, right. uh, where they were trying to portray this as a um, religious, religious war, that the persecutions and these things are happening. But mainly, we are the one who are persecuted. We Maiti Christians are the one who are persecuted. Our datas were not there in their um, in submission to the European Union or any kind of European Union. See, it is a very clear thing. Let us be very clear. I'm telling it very proudly in front of the camera that we are being persecuted by our Maite own community because we are Christian. Right. You are fighting with the Maite community not because you are a Christian, but you are a cookie. Mm -hmm. your, your fight with the cookie and Maite is purely cookie and Maite. Leave it that side. Don't, you know, just try to bring some sympathy game and, you know, try getting some, you know, extra attention from people and all. So okay. we don't want to do that. So my main focus was to break this ag agenda. And I heard because of all this press conference that I have done in many of the cities in India and all, uh, people started to ask a second question mm -hmm. because I, I, I went and had a series round of interviews right. and all. Right. And and one very saddening thing is Brad started when I went and interacted with many of the Christian leaders, I was told that Rohan, we were told by the cookie community that you have been sponsored by RSS. You have been bought by Mr. Bahrain. Mm -hmm. You have been bought by uh, the BJP government. No, why the hell you should, you know, <laughs> give another accusation to me that way just mm -hmm. to, just, uh, if you think that I am wrong, why don't you come and speak to me? Why don't you convince me that thing? Instead of uh, spreading those kind of uh, very wrong propagandas to other. And when I speak with the Christian brethren and like after knowing my heart, knowing the way how I speak and knowing the way how I convey, they were very clear that this person is not being sponsored by RSS. Okay. If I'm being sponsored by RSS, how can I tell very clearly in front of the camera that I, I am not, I am not. Are you working voluntarily at the moment? Yeah, yeah, very voluntarily. Okay. I would say, I would say people, there are a lot of uh, supporters for me right now coming up. Rohan, where, where are you going? Like, let me just help out with some, some you know, cash or some kind okay. so that at least you can go and... It's a kind of... Um, it's a kind of... I believe like, you know, I've been, call, I've been called to do this to save my own community this right. time. Right. That's what I feel in my heart. And the main reason why I have been joining this conflict, uh, you know, this community thing is for very two important reasons. Mm -hmm. One is to safeguard the rights and faith of my Maiti Christian believer. And more important than that, for my own community, okay. my Maiti community. That's what I believe. Right. And, and, and I've been also uh, involved in at least buying some drones. Right. Because recently, Brother Sorin in Ningtogong, mm -hmm. four people got killed. Mm -hmm. When we went and had a survey, two of them are Maiti Christians. Oh. So what if we take this information and go all the way to United Nations and tell that two Maiti Christians has been killed by the Kogi Christians. Mm -hmm. How can they claim that this is a Maiti Christian war when the, when the, when the Christians are killing the Christians? Mm. So that was the first day when this sparked in my mind that, yeah, at least I think I should 
take this initiative of buying drones. Okay. Because drone is something not an offensive thing, it's a defensive mechanism where okay. we are checking the entry of people and all. So even the daughter of the deceased person was donating money and telling me that Darwan, we have failed to, you know, mm -hmm. uh, we have failed to uh, um, save our dad. But please use this money for buying drones so okay. that this kind of incident doesn't follow in future. Yeah, I was uh, follow. I mean, I checked your social mm. media accounts mm. and I saw that you have been actively involved in procure, uh, procuring drones and other mm. equipments mm. and also uh, crowdfunding. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, like you have said, you you mentioned something which struck me. Mm. Is it? It's not for uh, offensive, but is it for defensive? Yeah. Is that what you are saying? Yeah. yeah. Because uh, these equipments or these drones, mm. for example, it's used. Mm -hmm. um, against another community, which mm -hmm. is a Kukizo community. Mm -hmm. So directly or indirectly, mm -hmm. uh, your activity might have been mm -hmm. involved in yeah. uh, hurting the other community. Mm -hmm. So you as a humanitarian, mm -hmm. as a social activist, mm -hmm. uh, what is your opinion on this one-sided uh, activity? Mm -hmm. Because uh, before, prior to the uh, this crisis, mm -hmm. you were a social activist, a mm -hmm. humanitarian, mm -hmm. regardless of which community yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you belong to yeah. or the other person belong to. Mm -hmm. But at the moment, mm -hmm. it's just a one-sided mm -hmm. activity you have been involved in. Mm -hmm. So, is this uh, how you will continue to go on with your activities or uh, what do you see in future, I mean, uh, in the days to come? Yeah. Time will bring, Brother Sorin. For now, as I've mentioned before also, the Ningtogong incident have hurted not just me, but the entire of the Meite Christian community. Okay. And that was when all the Meite Christian community, I'm the voice of the Meite Christian right now. Like I would say, okay. I'm the voice of the Meite Christian, okay. the entire community. And I would say most of my activities which I'm doing is not just my voice, but it's all the voice of all the Meite Christian. Mm -hmm. We have decided that yes, now it is I think a time to at least take up initiative from our Meite Christian community to buy drones also, because we are giving drones in periphery areas mm -hmm. just to safeguard ourselves. Okay. So the, the, the mechanism how they are using or the way how it has been used doesn't, I mean, it doesn't, uh, you know, I mean, bother us. Our main in, uh, in intention and our main initiative was to buy drones so that such kind of killing of the Meite Christian mm -hmm. doesn't follow in future. So that was our initiative from our Meite Christian perspective of view. I consult this with a lot of leaders of the Meite Christian community also and said like, I at least have a heart of buying drones and at least giving to some of the periphery areas because I would, I would name it, it's not just the Arambai Tengol. Arambai Tengol, at the end of the day, they are Meites. Mm -hmm. they have, even if they have an accusation of burning and you know, destroying many of the churches, at the end of the day, he is also a Meite, I'm a Meite. He sometimes visit me, I sometimes visit him. Sometimes uh, I also mention about all this Christian persecution to their leaders. Okay. They also they also mention about all these things to me also. But me sitting with any of the Arambai that should not create a, you know a scene or that should not create a, another uh, agenda mm -hmm. because we are living in a, we are living in Infal Valley right now. Right. Anywhere I can meet them, they can come and meet me at any time or anywhere of the place. If it was some kind of an, you know, uh, another state and I am going and meeting them and they are coming and meeting me, that can be made an agenda. But me, as far as I'm traveling in this valley area, I'll meet them at any place because it's an unplanned thing. No? They'll be at any place. I can meet them, right. drink a cup of tea, coffee, mm -hmm. anything else. That should not make an agenda. But Brother Sorin, I'll make it very clear. And I think this will make it very clear to our uh, cookie community also. Mm -hmm. In 2021, in the month of um, April, I still uh, uh, remember the date. It was April 22nd. I was uh, going to Mori okay. to help uh, refugees who were coming from Myanmar. That time, this uh, Janta war between the Myanmar's and mm -hmm. the, the Kuki Joe community was also following right. uh, a very uh, mass scale. And it seems that a lot of uh, Illegal immigrants, at the end of the day, okay. I have to name it. Illegal immigrants were coming to Moray and I, as I am a humanitarian, as you told me, mm -hmm. people were expecting that if no one is helping, at least Rohan might okay. be the right person to approach. Mm -hmm. So I was approached by some of the leaders from Moray. Rohan, at the end of the day, you are running so many humanitarian uh, projects. Can you please come, come to Moray and help out this 
brothers of our own bloodline. Mm. So without any second thought, I thought, ah, oh, it's okay. At the end of the day, it's a humanitarian course. So I took a few stuff, which I can, I went and helped them out. Today, today, because of this conflict, violence, many of the people whom I have helped in that mm-hmm. motor incident mm-hmm. are the ones who are threatening me for the okay. death threats. Mm-hmm. Now, let me go back again to 1993 and 1992. My family, my family, my community, my Laikai, my own locality was involved very actively in helping the Kuki communities from your hand, from the Naga's hand okay. in Enfal area and many of the area because like they were running towards the plain area and they were taking, taking shelter. Mm-hmm. My locality, my community were the ones who safeguard them. Now again, 20 years after, mm-hmm. these same people whom we have saved are the ones who are threatening my locality, okay. my people. So I would put in this way that it's all a matter of time. It's all a matter of time. Mm-hmm. Before the violence, I had a lot of connection with the cookie communities. Okay. Now, at the end of the day, sorry, it's about existence, I would say. Right, right. It's about existence. I was planning to cross Kangpokpi and give a greeting of Christmas. Mm. hundred out of 100%, I received more than 80% death threat messages that if you come to Kung Fu Beef, we will kill you and we will chop you. Okay. Other 20% had a good welcome, though, from a Christian point of perspective. Mm. But I said, like, at least on the day of Christmas, okay. let's be fair enough, me as a believer, I'll come to Kung Fu Beef mm. for a Christmas greeting in Church but I received more than 80% that mm. you'll, you'll, die, you'll die and go back if you come to Church Anpur and Kung Fu Beef. So from all this perspective, yep. uh, are you of the opinion that mm-hmm. whatever you are doing at the moment, mm-hmm. um, yes, you are a humanitarian, mm-hmm. but still, even if you're involved one-sidedly mm-hmm. for a community, your community, yep. you think you, it justifies whatever you're doing? I won't say... It, I mean, as a humanitarian. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I won't say it will justify myself. Now, my stand has to be very clear because, uh, Brother Sorin, let me be very clear once again. Mm. It's not about going one-sided. It's about my community. Right. It's not about one-sided. Okay. If if two parties are fighting, and if uh, if I being if I'm in your place, let's say for example, if I if I'm in your place, mm-hmm. and if the Maitis and uh, the Kukis are fighting, if I go with one side, that can be called one-sided. Mm-hmm. But when the Maitis and the Kukis are fighting, me standing for my community, mm-hmm. I won't say that's one-sided. Okay. Uh, because I might be the only one who have taken many initiatives. I spoke to some of the very renowned pastor of the cookie communities. Right. I was the one who took up initiative and I said, Pastor, please come to Gohati or Dimapur. Let's sit down. Let our Naga brothers also join this uh, right. conversation. Let's at least see from the perspective of believers point of view that how this can be solved. Right. Not from the political angle or not from the CSO angle. Many pastors were scared to come to Churchanpur and Gohati because many gunmen are above them. They right. said they'll be shot dead if mm. once they start this peace talk. I'm telling this in front of the camera because I'm ready for that. My community is ready for that. If some interrupts me in this, at least I think majority of the Maitai community would agree with this. Because um, we would be very clear. We want Manipur. Mm -hmm. We just don't want, you know, our state to be divided into pieces. That's our perspective. We want Manipur. So in that perspective, I've approached many of the cookie leaders, pastors, from my own point of view, not as an organization. I've tried many times, mm-hmm. but it was not working. Okay. So I, I, I would say, sorry, I, I won't justify what I, whatever I'm doing is, to, you know, good. In this nine months, I think I've done enough. Okay. There might be some, from, from someone's point of view, it might not be happy. Mm. From someone's point of view, it might be, uh, uh, it might be a so, you know, uh, satisfied thing. I would say all the Maitai Christians are really happy with my stand because mm-hmm. my stand of being standing for this community has created a lot of understanding between them, okay. Maitai and the Maitai Christian community also. So yeah. it's soothing to know that yeah. uh, you have approached the cookie community yeah. uh, for uh, you know a, pr- a platform for us to come together mm-hmm. and find a solution together mm-hmm. because that that's what humanity. Yeah, 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 yeah. So when you mention about. Uh, Involving and procuring equipments just, uh, you know, just for mm. one community. Sometimes, yes, it 
Well, while looking from the uh, from different angle or perspective, it might seem to be one sided. Mm -hmm. That's what I meant. Yeah. But then you have been working for both the community mm -hmm. to come together and find a solution to mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. That that's what matters the most. And I have an, a question here. Uh, since the violence started on the 3rd of May 2023, a lot of people's lives have been lost, hundreds yeah. of them. Mm -hmm. And then the cross world of properties damaged and thousands of people have been displaced. Mm -hmm. And especially the citizens of Manipur, mm -hmm. we have been directly or indirectly impacted mm -hmm. by this uh, current issue. Do you think this issue is worth it? I mean, this crisis, this violence, is it worth it? Ah, uh, eh, we were, we were, we were totally unprepared. I was, I was completely unprepared because I have never imagined in my life that Manipur would face this kind of conflict. Uh, and was out of a blue. Um, yeah, we have heard many uh, mysterious theories regarding this war that has been brought by the. Uh, BJP government, Maiti government. On the other side, it, we have been told that this was a long uh, plan of the Jolingam uh, mm -hmm. kingdom mm -hmm. <laughs> and the uh, Kukilen thing, which has been planned from years back, even from the conflict of the uh, Naga and the Kuki right. thing. And so, but, but, but we were completely unprepared for that. And when the violence broke out, I was not in Manipur also, I was mm -hmm. outside the state. I, I was that. completely unprepared of this. And I think the people of Manipur doesn't deserve this, especially, um, I would say, the, the innocent doesn't deserve this. Yes. The innocent people doesn't deserve this. It's not only about the Maite community, but see, there are a lot of innocent people in the cookies also. Of doesn't, mean that, doesn't mean that the cookies and Maites are fighting that, uh, that we as a whole, the Maite want to kill the cookies completely. No, 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 no. That doesn't make sense. It doesn't work that way. Wars are fought by warmongers. Mm -hmm. Wars are being fought by warmongers. Mm -hmm. Internally, I would say there are many cookies who miss their mighty friends. Even my friends miss me. <laughs> Even my, my cookie friends, mm -hmm. they miss me a lot. Right, of course, and, of course. And there, in, in, in the long run, there are also many mighties who miss uh, uh, cookie uh, friends. And there are also a lot of cookies who sometimes, you know, um, uh, tell me that they have nothing to do with this war, but there are a lot of outsiders who are coming and you know doing this uh, war. Mm -hmm. That's what that's what we have heard the statements from some of the cookies also, because the I would say the, I would segregate it in this two with old cookies and the new cookies. Okay. The old cookies who have stayed with us for a longer period and a version of time, whom I have known for years and years, I would say they are not much involved in this war. No. But most of my social media commentators and the haters who are commentating are mostly people who don't know Manipuri. Mm -hmm. They say they are in Manipur, but they don't know Manipuri. So that makes another round of questions like where are they coming from? So I would say the old cookies and the new cookies. And I would say majority of my social media followers and commentators who are commenting are also mostly from the, the, the new version of the people who I don't know especially they don't speak Manipuri at all. Mm -hmm. So wars are being fought with the warmongers, but at the end of the day, there are also people in ocean lives between the Maitais, among the Kukis, right. both the communities who wants this war to be end. I won't disclose his name. Um, I had the opportunity of, uh, I won't say it's an opportunity, but it was God's plan. Uh, I had an uh, opportunity of sitting with one of the very reputed uh, Kookie leader mm -hmm. in the Dimapur airport. Okay. When I was about to board a flight to Gohati, mm. he came. He also came to board a flight to Dimapur Airport. I met him. He is a very good friend of mine, a very dear friend of mine from before the conflict. Also, okay. I said, "Hi, how is it going?" He said, "All the rich people, mm. all the able people, have gone to Bangalore, Delhi, right. Kolkata, stayed in their flights." and have stayed Aramse. Mm. Now the war is being fought by the daily wages earner. Yes. People go and earn, they come back, they have to go to bunkers. Mm -hmm. It is a high time that your leader and our leader right. should end this. Because at the end of the day, the innocents are the ones who are suffering. Right. And, and you know, there is, a, there is a proverb in the Manipuri that 
which means like instead of the dog barking mm-hmm. uh, when the thieves come, the donkey was barking. But the donkey was actually helping uh, the owner to know that, that the thieves have come. But because it was not the duty of the donkey, the donkey got bitten up. It was the duty of the dog to be bark, mm-hmm. to, be, uh, to, uh, to, to bark when the thieves come. Right. But the donkey was barking. Sometimes we feel like we are just donkeys mm. who are barking. Just a reason because the thieves are coming, but it is the duty of the dogs to bark. But, in, but because we love our home and we love our family so much that we, we have bark. But we are getting unnecessary, you know, right, right. pressures and all these things. Right, right. Um, so Ron, it's, yes, uh, saddening to know mm. the situation and also uh, where the innocents are involved, mm-hmm. uh, being killed. Mm-hmm. But then, uh, like you said, the rich ones are nowhere to be seen. Yeah. And they're not, uh, you know, physically involved as well. It's always the innocent who lost their lives yeah. in uh, wars and crisis, right? And uh, here's another question, especially uh, faced by the Nagas, mm-hmm. the public, yeah. the Nagas in general. Um, Manipur, we feel mm-hmm. the public mm-hmm. have an opinion, thinking it it might be on the verge of becoming like a lawless state. Mm-hmm. For example, like you mentioned earlier, the organizations like Arambai Tango. Mm-hmm. Um, who have been roaming around mm-hmm. in, in the city, within the city. Mm-hmm. Uh, like you mentioned earlier, it might be to defend the community, the mm-hmm. Métis community. Mm-hmm. But then we saw on social medias mm-hmm. where our, our ministers, MLAs, take mm-hmm. oath, mm-hmm. being taken out by mm-hmm. an organization, mm-hmm. and then, uh, which is, I am think, unconstitutional. Mm-hmm. And then, um, for example, uh, within, especially within the periphery areas, we Nagas have mm-hmm. been facing mm-hmm. harassments mm-hmm. every now and then mm-hmm. uh, by an organization or by s- certain underground organization. Mm-hmm. Where, for example, recently, even in a couple of days ago, mm-hmm. where they have been uh, started extortion from mm-hmm. the uh, this wingers and mm-hmm. trucks, mm-hmm. where they they are given these things uh, receipts as well. Yeah. Right. So, and then these kinds of harassment uh, financially as well, but then there, there were reports of looting of uh, uh, cash and mm-hmm. also of uh, vehicles and stuff. Mm-hmm. So sometimes uh, we as Nagas mm-hmm. feel threatened as well, even if we are not directly involved. Mm-hmm. We are, uh, you know, in directly or in directly or indirectly mm-hmm. uh, being harassed and then mm-hmm. we feel sometimes threatened to even insecure, to even come to info, mm-hmm. to live in info. Mm-hmm. Do you really think we are in a lawless state? What is the future of this uh, issue? Mm-hmm. And then what do you want to say to the Naga community okay. on, in regards to this particular issue? I mean, this uh, violence. Yeah. So when I answer this question, like many, many of, uh, I mean, the cookies would be judging that he's answering this question because he fears Arambai Tango. Doesn't work that way. I'm telling very clearly, it was the Arambais or it was the Lipuns or whatever you name it or what you call it. I've already told very clearly that there is a case of, you know, vandalization of the churches already. And I've told this in public already many a times, not just this, just this interview. See, when it comes to lawless uh, state, I would say rather blaming our, uh, you know, the, the, the Maite community or I would say the state government. It has a, it has more weightage on blaming the central government because it was, it is supposed to be the central government who should intervene this, and then it could have finished in a spark of a minute, because yet they have done their duty well and good before, when we Maiti communities and also the Kuki communities, even the Nagas have already approached Mr. Narendra Modi already hundred times regarding this violence to come and intervene this situation. They have never, ever, you know, responded anything. At the end of the day, the Kangla, this, um, the oath-taking ceremony, Mm -hmm. I would say it's not just the Arambai Tangle. People see this as the Arambai Tangles because they were the ones who took up the initiative. But it is not only the Arambai Tangle. Let me be very clear. The entire Maitai community was the one who was calling all the, uh, all the lawmakers. Even I was involved inside Kangla mm-hmm. to make this even happen. No, it was not in the intention of Arambai Tengol. Mm-hmm. Because, because Arambai Tengol was the first one who initiated this. But after that, all the organizations from the different backgrounds of Manipur came and wanted to make this happen. Because their main intention was, 
when the ten cookie amelas have already joined hand and mm. seated at the same place, then have done different meetings at different agendas. Mm. There was not a history of the Maiti amelas sitting in one place and having a meeting because of this opposition and the BJP and the Congress and the NPP. So many things were there. But the main initiative of that thing was to bring an umbrella of all the Maitai MLS at one point at one time together. Okay. Yeah, this has been uh, this has some kind of demerits also looking in the eyes of the other people though. Right. But the intention was very clear that we want all the Maitai MLS to come and sit properly. The mm -hmm. uh, same thing also happened in uh, New Delhi also. The Europe of Manipur have called all the yes. MLS and then it was the same kind of thing. Okay. The another incident took part in Delhi so Many of the organizations were not able to involve in the Euro of Manipur meeting in uh, New Delhi. But here it was Manipur Kangla itself. Okay. So all the communities, it was, no, I'm not just telling this uh, for saying, say, it was not only the Arambai. If you have seen the videos, all the locality, all the mothers, Maira Paibis, all okay. the local groups and club, everyone came out in the street to make this event happen. Okay. I was also in actively involved uh, to make sure that this even happens in a very, uh, you know, in, in, in a very subjective and normal form. My message to Naga people is, let me be very clear. Mm. Um, if, if my message to Naga people would be, I have taken initiative of at least speaking to some Dikuki pastors. Let's make it a closed door uh, program also. I have no objection on that. But if few of the Naga pastors and leaders could have taken an initiative of making some of the Maiti leaders, mm -hmm. let's say from the Maiti Christian leaders, okay. now bringing to a religious platform, from the Maiti Christians and from the Kukis and from the Nagas, at least some few of us, some 10, 10 from each community comes and sit together somewhere mm -hmm. and bring a, a kind of, not I would say that's not a solution, but that's a starter of that's a starter of a peace peace talk or something, an initiative where at least it can be propagated to the different communities. My only request to the Naga community would be that request to, you know, please arrange any kind of that meeting okay. where we, Maiti Christians and the Kukis and the Nagas can sit together, mm -hmm. where we can bring out our own points and views and we can sit together. So you meant to say the Nagas can be the mediator yeah, yeah, for this Yeah, the Nagas peace. can be the mediator, yes. All right, yeah. great. Okay, um, since this uh, crisis happened, the Kukizo community have been completely wiped out from the Imphal Valley. Yeah. And they are seeking for a separate administration now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the Maite community, some groups are uh, seeking for a scheduled tribe. Send uh, tribe, yeah. Yeah, uh, this uh, title. And then uh, this Kukis in different way, they're looking for a different political solution called a Kukilen. Yeah. The Nagas has their own political aspiration. Some Maites has their own political aspiration mm -hmm. called the Kanglai Park. Yeah. Mr. Ron, we want to know what is Manipur for you? What do you envision Manipur? How do you envision My it? My picture of Manipur is very different from those uh, radical people. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of radical people in every community. In my community, in, even in the Naga community, I've seen radical people. I've con I had a conversation with many of the uh, uh, Naga community also. And I would say, to me, Manipur is, uh, should be a mixture of all the local ethnic groups, the right. 35 ethnic groups. That should be the real picture of Manipur. It doesn't mean of the Kangli Park, Kukilan, mm -hmm. or, or the Greater Nagalim, right. or whatsoever the other uh, Naga people are doing. Mm -hmm. To me, that is a very different subject. For me, Manipur should be of all the mixtures of all the 35 ethnic groups that the government mm -hmm. already recognized. So I would say in a broader perspective, rather than going for a, let me be again, um, you know, jokingly bring out this perspective. What if the Nepali comes up with the, another thing of, we want a Nepali lens. Right. Or uh, let's say, uh, if we made the Christian, we wanted a separate made the Christian lens. Mm -hmm. If it comes to all this division, then like, won't be a good thing. Okay. I would, I would differentiate in such a way, your, the, the Naga's way of approaching the central government for a greater Nagalim, that's constitutional. Correct. That's constitutional. Mm -hmm. Because they had, they had a peace talk with the government of India. They had done this in a very, very systematic way of talking with government of India. And it took years and years. And the, still the talks has been still continuing. And, and we don't have any kind of 
I would say objection because that's up to the constitution. Right. That's what the constitution and that's what the court decides. You are doing in a very legal way of form and constitution way of form. Getting the Greta Nagalim or uh, this thing depends on the constitution of India. Doesn't you know belong to you and us? We asking for uh, this settled tribe thing. We also did it in a very systematic and a constitutional way of form. We went to the court and we went for all the paperwork and everything. And to us, giving the settled tribe thing is up to the constitution. If the court doesn't give, then what can we do? We cannot yell, we cannot shout, we cannot kill people. Now, Kuki coming for their Kuki land was something very strange because they, they have tried this not only to us, but to you people also way back in 1992 and 1993. They have tried this with Dima Sahatao, they have tried this with the Myanmar uh, people, they have tried this in Bangladesh, they have tried this in everywhere at least to get something, a land called Kuki land. They have fought many wars in many of the uh, you know periphery areas of the Northeast India also. So I would say there is a very big difference of approaching for a uh, Kuki land or, uh, or a Kangle Park or whatsoever it might be called to approach in a very constitutional way and an unconstitutional way. And I would treat this the way how they are asking for a, you know, um, cookie land is something very strange. Because on that day, 3rd of, uh, um, I mean, May, if you remember, nothing happened in the Naga areas. Nothing happened in the Naga areas. Because you guys were also protesting in a very, I mean, normal way. Because you were just rejecting the way how Maitais uh, wanted to go for Sadul tribe. And you rejected it in a very form of, a, you know, constitutional way. So you had a peace, uh, you had a rally. And then you objected it. No violence, no drama happened in your places. But how come dramas happen in Chochanpur, More, specifically all Kampukpi, the areas where Kuki were the majority? Mm. So there was a question to us also. That Do you think it has been pre-planned? Kind of, because, uh, because uh, I would say, uh, I've been also working with many of the uh, cookies also. When I inquired, many of the um, cookie officers and leaders mm. were not present in Infal. Mm. Some uninformed cookies okay. were dead in the uh, Infal Valley itself. Some officers were also dead, some cookies. I think they were not informed. Mm. But the informed people have already fled okay. long time back. Because when we check the uh, leaf, leaf letter and this leaf history, they've already taken leave at least some one week ahead, 15 days ahead, already, already. And this was not just one, two percent. It was not a coincidence. Okay. It was a series long number of mm. Huki people. Okay. So, what, what about the Maitai community? Do you think they are aware of this? They were aware of this. Have, has there been any planning involved uh, amongst the Maitai community as well? Do you think so? Because uh, the, uh, for example, or some, some organizations were already there who are actively involved at mm -hmm. the moment. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think we, we kind of felt and sensed that something okay. like this might be coming. Okay. But we were not completely, uh, you know, um, uh, unprepared for this. Um, when, when other, sorry, when other was asking like, uh, Rohan, where are your arms and ammunitions coming from for the Maitai community? I've told it very clearly, we have snatched it from all the, I mean, uh, stations and everywhere else, whatever we get in the plain area. Because we were unprepared. Okay. We don't know this kind of incident was uh, coming. But where are the arms and ammunitions of cookies coming from? Everyday machine guns and all the automated weapons are being shot at from all the periphery area. They claim in the entire world that they are poor people, they are minority. How can a minority poor people have automated weapons costing lakhs and lakhs of rupees, crores and crores of rupees? Where is this money coming from? That's a million dollar question again. Okay. But we were unprepared for this, so we had to snatch from people. See, I'm not justifying my community. Yeah. Uh, See, they are, just what it is. Yeah, <laughs> just what it is. And okay. we have snatched, we have defended ourselves, that's it. And, um, uh, and uh, you know, we, are all, we have also, we, in the sense, like some of our uh, people from among ourselves also have made so many, uh, you know, heinous uh, mistakes also, like uh, nakedly parading the right, two right. women. I don't justify for that. I've spoken in national media that this is a heinous crime and and uh, you know, uh, a proper action should be taken because I can't, I can't, I can't justify those kind of things right. because it's happening in front of their eyes. But let me tell you very clearly, Sorin, when Linthoing Anbi, that mm -hmm. that that sister and that uh, 
small boy, I mm-hmm. forgot his name, when mm-hmm. two of them right. died, right. not even a single cookie organization came and protested or have acknowledged or have, you know, conveyed any kind of condemnation letter. Instead, they claim that this is something to be handed over to CBI. In a logical way, let me ask you this question. When the Nagas and the cookies are fighting, mm-hmm. two Naga died. Mm. Are you going to say that Maitis killed the two Nagas? It is obviously at the end of the day, the cookies, if you don't have proof that doesn't, doesn't make sense that the cookies have not done it, it was a conflict itself. Right. And the dead, uh, you know, the photos of them were getting viral in the social media. Not even a single organization have claimed and have condemned till dead about those two, two, two ladies. Mm-hmm. There's a difference between, I mean, what I have found between the uh, Maitis and the cookies. See, let me be very clear again. I'm not justifying my own community. But when the Maitis are wrong, even starting from myself, I have the guts of telling that Soren, what I have done, mm-hmm. it's wrong. Okay. I'm sorry. And it is very unfortunate that this kind of incident happened. Mm-hmm. And we are very sorry for it. But till then, I've also joined many of the divots and many of the national TV. Not even a single speaker from the cookie apologize, accept their own mistake. Okay. Rather, they always try to justify it. Okay. Ron, despite all these incidences, mm-hmm. despite all these killings and damaging of properties, and despite all the, you know, the hurting incidences, mm-hmm. do you still envision for a Manipur where Maitis or Cookies or uh, Nagas, Nepalis, do you still think we can still live together as one in the state called Manipur? I have a firm belief because uh, this is not the first time where, where, where the cookie communities are fighting with any uh, other community. Okay. They, they had a history of fighting with your community, many other communities already. Uh, there's still a possibility. Yeah, there's still a possibility because like you guys also fought for like approximately five years and then still like we had joined again in a new money pool. Okay. Okay. And I believe in future, it depends on the leaders. All right. It, it depends on the leaders, how they, they communicate and how they convey the message to the people. It's uh, pe- people should not be centric on this ideology of one community. Mm-hmm. Even myself, our community, we should not be centric with the Maitai Maitai thing, or the Naga should not be con- confined with this Naga Lim and Naga Naga thing, or the Kuki should not be confined with the Kuki 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 Len thing. Okay, they should confine with the idea of more of a Manipur. But it is my firm promise today, starting uh, taking your uh, platform. I don't know if I. I don't know if I go to heaven, but until and unless I'm here on this earth by the grace of God, um, I have already promised this to myself that let's see how God leads me. Okay. I have a, I have a leading of um, God, you know, to protect the integrity of Manipur also. Until and unless once I'm here in this okay. planet Earth, okay. I will never, never, ever compromise with the integrity of. Okay. My state money. Yeah, I appreciate your yeah. uh, commitment. And yeah. Rohan, it's been a great conversation, great interaction. Um, and it's been very uh, meaningful as well. Yeah. To end this mm-hmm. conversation, ours, I'd like to give you the opportunity mm-hmm. as a closing remark yeah. to tell the people of Manipur mm-hmm. or even beyond Manipur mm-hmm. what the solution is for us. Because I'm sure uh, we have heard of this, but that I don't know. But uh, for me, mm-hmm. there's no winner in war. Yeah where thousands of people, hundreds of people lost their lives, mm-hmm. properties lost. Do you think um, there will be a winner among, I mean, between the Maite community and the Cookies or community? Uh, I don't think the war, I mean, it's good for any of us mm-hmm. for this war to be kept on. Mm-hmm. So what, in your opinion, is the solution and what are the immediate steps? You have mentioned few uh, earlier, yeah. Yeah. but what are the other steps which can be taken up immediately and in long, long term as well? Um, that can bring a peaceful solution yeah. to this ongoing crisis. Um, sorry, today let me just brief about um, a very beautiful story from Bible as a conclusion remark. I, I had gone through this uh, life of King Jehoshaphat, uh, Second Chronicles mm-hmm. uh, Jehoshaphat, and Jehoshaphat is a worshiper. He is a prayer warrior, and he believes in the leading of the Holy Spirit. Um, he was also a king, mm. 
and he fought a war with the three tribes in his time. And he was, he was attacked from all the three angles from different perspective by the three tribes. Uh, one of the tribe was Amite, I think. I, I forgot the other two tribes. But when he had no option, and he went, he went, when he was surrounded by the three tribes of, um, in his time, he had only one solution, mm -hmm. only one solution. Mm -hmm. He was a powerful uh, leader, he was a powerful king though, but instead of using his arms, instead of using his swords, instead of using his uh, army, he met people of worship, the worshippers, to be in front of the war and worship. And, and as, as the war has been fought by the people in the front line being the worshippers, God fight the battle for them. To me, fighting the battle for my community doesn't mean that God is going to kill the entire cookie or the entire of the cookie when they make some line of worshippers come against the mate. It doesn't mean that the war will be, uh, the, the entire mate would be killed. It doesn't work that way. Now in this era, it means a message that if people from both the communities, from the cookies and from the metes, from a perspective of believers' point of view, come worshiping, seeking the solution from God, okay. I think that is the only solution that we will have. Because at the end of the day, this God is going to end this war. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and if, 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 if God is on your side, who can speak against you? I mean, we have also used that uh, scripture they have been also using that scripture. But what I firmly more believe is like, this cannot be solved until and unless God himself intervenes the, 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 the conflict. Okay. So it, to me, I, I would say, forget about the one mongers between the Maitais and the cookies also, but at least there would be some. I spoke with one very gentle pastor from the cookie community recently. He said, Rohan, we are very sorry of what is happening. Mm -hmm. And sometimes he felt ashamed of his community because at the end of the day, his community as a whole, the Cookie Joe community, all Christians, all Christians, right. we, are, we are more a majority of non-believers community. When believers and the non-believers fight, I think it is the believers who has to set examples. It is the believers who has to fight this war in a godly form of tactics rather by worshipping, rather by seeing other objectives. And he felt so ashamed to himself that um, there should be people coming out from his community who wants to end this war by praying or by worshipping. So Soren, I think the best solution would be you give everything into the hand of God. Okay. And that's how the war is going to end. Otherwise, like we don't have any option. Okay. All right. Great. Um, Ron, it's been a very great conversation yeah. here with you. And then it's been very insightful as well. Yeah. And uh, hopefully, hopefully we're hopeful with, by, by God's grace, by uh, God's intervention, this ongoing crisis ends immediately. Thank you. So that, you know, um, after the crisis is over, we can talk more about yeah. uplifting the poor. Yeah providing better health care, mm -hmm. providing better education, bringing joy to people, bringing smiles on our faces to the people of Manipur. Mm -hmm. That's what we look forward to. Mm -hmm. And um, I wish you the best in your humanitarian activities, social activities in the days to come as well. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, thank you so much. You. And uh, to all the viewers of this uh, special episode, thank you for being with us uh, this very time. Uh, we have heard a lot about how our special guest of the day, our special guest of this episode, Mr. Philem Rohan Singh, has to say on the ongoing issue. He has expressed his opinion, and I hope uh, his opinion has been an insightful one, which will help us bring solution to this uh, very long ongoing crisis. And this is also a message to both the community, the Maiti community and the Kukizo community, to to work out something, to work something out, to let peace prevail in this state. Let us find solution together. And I'm sure we all, we don't want war at all because like we have discussed earlier, hundreds of people has lost their lives. Cores of properties has been damaged and um, lakhs of people has been, you know, thousands of people has been uh, affected, affected mentally. 
psychologically, physically as well. Let us find a solution together so that we bring peace to this, uh, this state and live together harmoniously as one. Thank you so much for being a part of this episode. See you in the next episode. Thank you.